Hi, I'm Brenda Quintana coming to you from the Beehive at QBsQuest.com. Today I'm sharing the second card in my new Fancy Fold series, where I endeavor to make fancy folds easier to create. Today we are tackling the Swing Fold card. The Swing Fold card requires some special cutting using a paper trimmer, but once the cutting and scoring is done, the card is really easy to finish off. So this is the way the card works. When you open it up, the middle part swings around to the back. So it's a really cool card to give someone for a special occasion. I'll show you how to make this card from start to finish. So let's get started. To start off with, you're going to need a piece of cardstock for the card base. I'm going to be using a piece of the Share What You Love Designer Series paper. This paper is a little thicker than our normal Designer Series paper, so it holds up quite well for a card base. You can also use cardstock instead of a thick Designer Series paper. I've cut this piece of paper to six and three quarter inches by five and a half inches. So I'm going to be using the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer, and this trimmer is great because it has both both a cutting blade and a scoring blade. And I have a hard time telling the two different blades apart. So what I did is I wrote cut and score right on my cutting and scoring blades with a Sharpie so that I could tell the two apart because you don't want to get the two mixed up. The other thing I did was I've taken a piece of post-it note and I've put it underneath where I'm going to be cutting, especially when you're using pattern paper. It's really hard to see the numbers on the vertical ruler. So if you just put a piece of post-it note under where you're cutting, then you'll be able to see the numbers more easily. Easily. So you're going to start with one of the six and three quarter inch sides up at the top and you're going to slide it in your cutter and we're going to line up with the five and a half inch mark. And we're not going to do a normal cut where you cut straight from the top to the bottom. We're actually going to move our blade along this ruler to the right spot. So you're not going to want this arm all the way down because you don't want to cut through where you don't want to cut. So I'm going to slide my blade over to the one and a quarter inch mark. And that's just happens to be where my uh, post-it note is right here, lined up right with the one and a quarter inch mark. And so I'm going to cut from the one and a quarter inch mark down to the four and a quarter inch mark. So on my post-it note right here, it's this whole area right here. And we're gonna go cut down just till we reach the four and a quarter inch mark. Then I'm going to lift off and you can see it's cut a slot into my paper. We're going to turn this piece 180 degrees. So this slot is going to be over on the opposite side. And so now the other six and three quarter inch side or long side will be up at the top. And we're gonna do the same thing. Line up at the five and a half inch mark right here. And then we're gonna bring the arm down, um, but don't bring it down right onto um, the surface until you've got your cutting blade lined up at the one and a quarter inch mark again. And then it can come down and then you're going to cut just to the four and a quarter inch mark. It's so handy to have this post-it note here, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of these, then you know that you have to just cut in this one area. This is actually a three inch post-it note so it fits perfectly within this little area right here. Now I'm going to actually take away this post-it note and I'm going to put in two other post-it notes because we are going to be cutting now in two different spots. So I've cut these little post-it notes to one and a half inches. So I'm going to put this one at the one and a quarter inch mark and it's going to go from the one and a quarter inch mark to the two and three quarter inch mark. And this little guy here is going to line up at the four inch mark and it's going to go to the five and a half inch mark. So now we're going to take the piece of paper or cardstock. And we're going to turn it to the five and a half inch side. So one of the shorter sides, it doesn't matter which one. And this time I'm going to line up my piece at the four and a quarter inch mark. 
I'm going to bring my cutting blade up to the one and a quarter inch mark and again just having these post-it note here really helps me visually see exactly where I need to cut in two different spots. You have your cutting blade now at the one and a quarter inch mark so you can bring your arm down and we're going to cut from the one and a quarter inch mark to the two and three quarter inch mark. And then I'm going to lift up and move my cutting blade over to the four inch mark and then bring my arm down and then I'm going to cut to the five and a half inch mark. Then I'm going to lift up again and now I'm going to rotate my piece 180 degrees so the opposite five and a half inch side is up at the top and we're going to do the same thing. Line your piece up at the four and a quarter inch mark over here on this side and then move your cutting blade over to the top to the one and a quarter inch mark and when that's in the right spot you can bring your cutting arm down and we're going to cut from the one and a quarter inch mark down to the two and three quarter inch mark lift up and slide your blade over to the four inch mark and when it's in the right spot bring your cutting arm down and then slide from the four inch mark down to the five and a half inch mark. Okay so now you have a piece where the center part um, is still intact but there's kind of a window starting to happen on both of those sides. Now you can take away these post-it notes from the side and you're going to want your uh, long side up at the top again, so the six and three quarter inch side. Um, move your cutting blade all the way down to the bottom so you don't accidentally cut because now we need the scoring blade. So with a six and three quarter inch side up at the top, you're going to line up at the two and three quarter inch mark. And you're going to score from the very edge at the top down to the one and a quarter inch mark. And I don't have it marked right now with the post-it note, but I can actually see right here where my cut line is. So all I need to do is score down to the one and a quarter inch mark. Then I'm going to lift up and bring my scoring blade all the way down to the four and a quarter inch mark. And now I'm going to score from the four and a quarter inch mark all the way to the edge and back. And then I'm going to slide this piece over to the four inch mark right here, line it up with the four inch mark. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to score from the edge to the one and a quarter inch mark and back and lift up your scoring blade, bring it down to the four and a quarter inch mark, and then just score from there to the edge, and you can go back if you want. And now this card base is all cut and scored, and we just need to fold it. So to start off the folding process, we are going to fold this C-shaped piece on the left side, we're going to fold it down. So just fold this piece down. Then on the opposite side, we're going to fold this piece up. So one side gets folded down and one side gets folded up. And so this is the side that I want to have on the front. And you can take your bone folder now and just smooth down those folds. This is why I love using this designer series paper because it is thicker than designer series paper but not quite as thick as cardstock so it just works perfectly for this project. So now you can see the swing fold on this card already works and now we just need to decorate up the surfaces. So I'm actually going to cover up this center piece on both sides. So I'm going to use some basic gray cardstock. I've cut two pieces and both of these pieces measure four and a quarter inches by three inches. So I'm just going to take some Tombow glue and I'm going to put some right here on the back of this piece. I'm going to slide this in and I'm going to cover this piece right here. So now that that is the front piece and then I'm also going to do this back piece here. Put some Tombow on the back of it and then just slide this in 
want to make sure I line up everything so that it is square. And now we have the front and the back piece. So next we're going to stamp the images for our card and I'm going to use two pieces of Whisper White for that. I've cut them both to the same size which is four inches by two and three quarters of an inch. And for this card I'm going to be using the One for All stamp set. I'm going to be using the Happy Birthday and I'm going to be using this girl on a bike. So for this stamp, it is one stamp. I actually cut away the greeting from the girl on the bike. So this is the stamp that you're left with and this way I can use this girl as the image on the front and um, not have to worry about taking off the greeting or just inking up the one side. So it saves me a lot of time. So now I'm going to start off by stamping this girl and keep in mind since this is going to be the front of the card this part of the cardstock is going to be showing so I'm going to want to stamp the girl on the bike over towards the right hand side. So I'm going to take my basic gray ink pad and open it up and I've got my girl already on a block so just ink her up and stamp her towards the right hand side centered from top to bottom like that. Then I'm going to stamp the other piece with my mint macaron ink pad and this big happy birthday. I just love this happy birthday. So let's ink this up, make sure it's got good coverage and I just want to center this one on my Whisper White piece. It's a big stamp so I'm using both hands and just applying some gentle pressure. I'm just letting it sit there for a couple of seconds to make sure I've got good contact and then I can lift off and there's my happy birthday. Mint Macaron dries a little bit lighter than when it is stamped so it's going to be just a little bit lighter than that. So now what you can do is um, add these to the card base. Just add a little bit of Tombow to the back and I just want to make sure that this image is centered on my card and then we can open this up and flip it to the back and do the same with the happy birthday. I like that these are just big bold images so the hardest part of this card is doing the cutting and scoring at first uh, but once you've got that done if you pick big bold images then you can minimize your work on the stamping end on the back so that's why I try to make this card easier with the stamping side um, and not go so elaborate because you do have some work to get the card base just right at the beginning. So now we just need a few little embellishments to help us make this card look even nicer. So I'm taking some pool party shimmer ribbon and I'm just going to tie it around this side over here and I'll just come in and create my first knot. Then if you have a pair of locking tweezers, these work really well to help you tie a knot. I'm just clamping down onto my knot. When you clamp down and, and release the tweezers, it locks the top end of the tweezers. So it's just like having a finger right there, which is perfect for tying knots on cards. Then I can come through and do my second knot. And with a stiffer ribbon like this, I can really take my time in creating that knot. So I'm going to be pulling over here on the right side because I see my knot is starting to form. And I'm going to actually grab my knot on the left side. And this is helping pull the, the right side of the ribbon through. And it's creating a nice flat knot in the center. So if you have time and you have nice ribbon like this, you can really take your time making that knot perfect when you have that locking tweezer in place then you can move that out of the way. 
And then all I need is take some good scissors. I have scissors that I just use for ribbon cutting and cut off the two ends. So now we can just add a few little rhinestones and I've got my basic rhinestones here and I'm just going to use a paper piercing tool and I'm going to use some of my smaller rhinestones so I'll just pick them up on the end of my paper piercing tool and I'm going to put one here on this top flower right here and then I thought to expand the flowers to make them look a little bit like they keep going I'm actually going to put a rhinestone where there isn't actually a flower just a little bit to the left so you can just imagine that there's another flower there and then I'll grab one more rhinestone and I'm going to put it down here right by the bike to kind of have a little bit of glimmer when you pick up the card so there is the card and when you pull open the card the back flips forward and it has this beautiful beautiful happy birthday so there's not a lot of spot to write on this card so you could just write in the person's name and your name down at the bottom so this is not really a, a great card for writing a big long greeting but it certainly is a very wow card and it even looks really nice when you sit it on a shelf if you expand it a little bit you can see the happy birthday piece out so it's a really nice card to display as well and I just wanted to also show you what the card would look like if you made it out of cardstock so here I did a little bit of a different card using the abstract impressions stamp set and what I did is I used mint macaron as my card base instead of using designer series paper to create a little bit of a pattern I stamped a rose from the abstract impressions stamp set and I used a really light green called soft sea foam to stamp these background roses and they look just beautiful and then I stamped this focal point layer with another stamp from that stamp set added a little bit of ribbon again and with the rhinestone so the same theme then all you need to do is stamp yourself a back so I'm just going to take this and put some Tombow on the back of this piece so I can finish off the card and just slide this over top, line this up, and smooth this down. And so now this card has a floral front and then a nice floral background. So I think this is a really versatile card. It definitely is a wow card and I hope you will give it a try. All the supplies you'll need to make this swing fold card are available for purchase on my blog. The link is in the description of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Bye for now. I love to reward my customers with free tutorials. Check out my new Christmas tree advent calendar. You can get this tutorial free if you place a minimum $15 order in my Stampin' Up! store. For more details, check out my blog at qbsquest.com and click on rewards. Hi, it's Brenda again. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also visit my blog for more information on my projects and to learn about my rewards program, or just watch another one of my videos. Thanks for watching.